Nigel and Marmalade is an animated series that has completely taken over Instagram, YouTube and TikTok with its one minute nuggets of pure chaotic genius. From the northern English accents to the outlandish nature of the quests, it truly seems like everything aligns perfectly in Nigel and Marmalade. So, let's get into the show. Nigel and Marmalade is a show based around the seemingly very sensible Marmalade and his incredibly cute, magic filled counterpart, Nigel. And usually within these one minute shorts, Nigel and Marmalade are walking, minding their own business, when an otherworldly creature comes out of the blue and asks for their help. At which point, Nigel uses his magic to try and lend a hand to the person struggling. However, more often than not, this magic leads to something horrific happening. Like say, a prisoner being freed or a plague being unleashed upon the planet, or anything else that is equally as horrific. And at the end of most episodes, we get a brilliant one-liner from Nigel or Marmalade. No, Nigel. He's just had a traumatic brain injury. He'll be fine, probably. And unlike many other shows that follow a rigid arc, Nigel and Marmalade is able to keep the show fresh. And this reflects in the comments, with fans never knowing what to expect next. And so... In order to get a better understanding of what makes Nigel and Marmalade so successful, I will now pass over to alternate universe Harry from Ends, who is sat in the English town of Bristol with the show's creator, Tom Bates. You join us. <laughs> you join us on a sunny, roasting warm day in Bristol, and I am with the creator of Nigel and Marmalade, Mr. Tom Bates. Hello everyone, it's me, it's Tom. And we are currently using one microphone because the Harry from Ends channel is on a little bit of a budget restraint. The first question I would like to ask, how did you get into making Nigel and Marmalade and what was the main catalyst or catalysts? How did I get into it? So, uh, well, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to do filmmaking, little kids, you know, eight years old playing with a camera. And it was really like COVID lockdown where I was like, right, I can't go out and make films. I'm gonna try making a film in my house and I tried green screen stuff, I tried just like me with a camera, and then I thought, well, I've always drawn and doodled stuff. Yeah. So I started doing animation in like 2020 or something. Yeah, tried a few experiments, and then Nigel and Marmalade came up, came up because, um, so I was, um, I'd drawn like little versions of Nigel mm. over the years, and I was making these longer sort of three, four minute YouTube yeah. videos, and I thought I would do an original idea because I wanted to do sort of like, Big Les Show style, do a series on YouTube, because I saw that and I was like, if I was going to do something on YouTube, that's what I'd want to do. So I thought I'd use these characters, Nigel and Marmalade, and had this adventure set up for them, just like a little five minute thing. And then part of that story that I had, which has never been made or never released, part of that story <laughs> was there was a theme tune when they appeared. He's Nigel, the tiny wizard. So someone was in trouble and they appeared over the hill and it was Nigel riding Marmalade with the theme tune and that was the first animation I did. And I made it sort of as a, as a way to kick myself up the arse to actually make the video and just thought, I'll post it, see what happens, just get it out there. Yeah. And then once it was out there, it just sort of started to take off on TikTok. And I was yeah. like, cool, well, I'll keep going. I made a few more videos and it just sort of snowballed from there and I just, just haven't, haven't stopped. This is how we're doing it, by the way. We're passing the mic back and forth, like school children. What would you say to any up and coming animators in terms of the utilization of social media? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think it's the best way to get stuff out quickly. So I think working quickly is great. Because what basically I fell into the trap of trying to make something perfect or not even perfect, just like something I was like, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I would sort of cripple myself by like not finishing anything or starting something, starting an idea and working on it for six months and, and you know, never getting anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And it was finally the deadline that I set myself with Nigel and Marmalade was at first, yeah. make something every single week and you release it whether you like it or not. Yeah. It wasn't like I'm making the best thing I can make. Yeah. It was I'm making the best thing I can make in a week. So I think give yourself parameters and social media was a way for me to have those parameters of like a release schedule with feedback and then people also holding you accountable, being like, I want to see more, come on, give us yeah. more. <laughs> Which you, you get a lot of, but it kind of, you can use that as a motivation in a positive way. Has anyone ever, you know, has anyone ever commented saying, what's up with the Northern accents? You know? <laughs> people have been insanely positive in the comments. I can't <laughs> believe how nice everybody is, yeah. um, which I really appreciate, thank you. Um, <laughs> 
and the northern accents, I don't know, I haven't seen, like, people, as far as I can tell, they like them. Uh, I don't know how accurate they are to specific areas. I just give it a go and see what feels right. <laughs> no, Nigel, he's not dead. He's in shock from the trauma and blood loss. Um, so I just kind of pick accents and it, northern accent just sometimes it feels right. It feels yeah. good. Uh, so in terms of your branding, Nigel and Marmalade doesn't really have its own tag. It's Tom Bates. Like when you go on social media, you'll see that everything is under your name. Is that an intentional choice or did you just name the account Tom Bates and so happen to upload Nigel and Marmalade on it? It was exactly that one, Harry. It was just my account. Like, I used all these accounts for years. Like, I think I made my YouTube channel in 2012. I yeah. think I made my Instagram channel around the same time. You know, like, all these things were just made under my name. Also, I think there is something to be said about the fact that I make all of it myself on my own. And it doesn't seem like, if it's called my name, it doesn't seem like it's coming from a a, co a company or something Definitely. unattainable or so it just appeared it's almost like oh no this is the name of the guy who is making this by hand and I like that handmade feel I like that it can be attributed to me and people because of that in the comments address me not just <laughs> the characters yeah. what would you say is your biggest piece of advice to any up-and-coming animators in the space I know we mentioned briefly about social media but is there anything in terms of like burnout work ethic kind of like, you know, pushing yourself too hard almost. You know, speaking to YouTubers as well here, by the way. Um, just anything in general that you'd say, any strong piece of advice? So I think um, burnout is a really, really good, yeah. really good question. Like I, 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 when I started doing Nigel and Marmalade, I was trying to do one a week. And it's a lot to do a 60 second animation in a week um, around a full-time job, which I've had this sort of for the past year while doing Nigel and Marmalade. I've done it all around a full-time job. Yeah. Came a point where I wasn't, seeing people, I wasn't hanging out with friends as much, I wasn't seeing my family, you know, and I realized that I had to drop down, um, drop down the schedule a little bit to every other week, which is still a lot yeah. for animation, and that's, that's probably the biggest bit of advice is um, don't push yourself to do impossible stuff, give yourself a break. Like, I worked towards this, like I'm, I'm 32, and I worked since I was a, a teenager from 14, <laughs> I was like, this is what I'm doing. So the journey has been very long and I, I have sort of built up to this over 15 plus years, oh, wow. yeah. making a lot of stuff in my spare time to the point where when this took off, I was like, I'm ready. So it didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't like, yeah. oh, I've spent every evening not working on stuff. It's, it was kind of, it felt like a buildup over time yeah. so that this was the first thing that took off and I was ready to jump for it. I would be worried if someone suddenly finds a success and then they're suddenly going at 100 miles an hour. I think you do need to ramp into it a bit. Um, and also just take your time. There is no pressure to be a success immediately. It's much better to take your time to find your voice and yeah. But burnout is an issue and the only way to solve it is to not do as much and don't <laughs> don't go crazy and do the impossible. It's absolutely a great point because you see even like in the music space or in any space really, if you have a huge blow up, uh, this is gonna sound like a silly example, but Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, all of these guys, you know, they blow up overnight and it's like they have songs with hundreds of millions of views tens of millions, whatever it is, because they don't really have a sustainable audience. They have people that are there for the hype. And I guess it's the same in any industry, that if you kind of rush things and just do things like because they're trending or you know, just, just for the sake of it really, because oh, it's the hot thing, then you're gonna have an audience, you've attracted an audience essentially that's into the hot thing or the into the trending thing, but it's not, it's not necessarily people that are gonna stick with you four or five years down the line when you, know, when you wanna make a passion project that's separate from all of that. If you do something that you think is gonna be popular, and then it does, but you don't like it. Yeah. And then it does get popular. You're stuck doing something you don't like just because it's popular. So you might as well keep doing something that you love, even if there's years where it doesn't get noticed by anyone, yeah. because at least you're doing something you love. And then if it takes off, fantastic. I had, I had, no, I had no inclination that Nigel Marmalade was gonna take off. And I'm very, 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 very lucky that I love it. Yeah. Because that is the only way that I've kept up the momentum that I have is because every week I'm excited to get stuck into doing it. Now that you've cracked the internet, yeah. has there been any uh, TV studios Anyone that's come up to you and said, I would love to make Nigel and Marmalade a full show, you know, get it on whatever network or, and we'll pay you a bajillion dollars. Mm -hmm. I am a bajillionaire now. Uh, no, um, so I have had some interest from some TV people. Um, in terms of how it relates to Nigel and Marmalade, I currently my plan is to keep that independent, keep it yeah. separate, keep it my thing. <laughs> I, unfortunately, because I'm, I'm the only person who's ever worked on it, like I own Nigel yeah. and Marmalade, it's my thing, and I think it's it's... Something that, at least currently, I want to hold on to and see what I can do myself. Yeah. What I am interested in, in doing uh, as a side thing is maybe seeing if I can do a TV thing, but, yeah. but not Nigel and Marmalade, something yeah. new. Um, just because 
I am scared to uh, have Nigel and Marmalade be changed into something yeah, that I don't yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm in a place where Nigel and Marmalade is uh, a direct from my brain out into the yeah, world, yeah. and I don't have to think about anything except do I like it. Would you say that YouTube is kind of the strongest place to grow your animation if you're just starting out? Or would you say it's TikTok with the shorts, you know, like that kind of just being thrown in your face? Or how would you say, like, Nigel and Marmalade was able to grow so quickly in the way that it did? It was really interesting to see the different algorithms at work. Yeah. Um, like TikTok was the first place that it took off. And that makes sense because TikTok is churning and showing yeah, just like, millions yeah. of videos. Look at this, look at this, look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah. And what you see with TikTok is a massive spike the day it comes out and then a very quick drop off into almost nothing for the rest yeah. of the time. So it's like you're big and then you're down and then you're big and then you're down. And so that worked for me on TikTok because it got it out there. So I, I, I just thought, uh, whatever, I'll post it. So I did and it was overnight, I think 200,000 views or 20, it was like 20,000 views and then 200,000 views. And so that was enough for me to be like, oh cool, I'll make another one right now. So within like four days I made another one and it went up yeah. again and I was like, oh my God. Um, and at the same time I was posting to Instagram and YouTube at the same time. Yeah. However, they, like I said, they were getting a few hundred views maybe. Whereas uh, maybe three months after I started, Instagram started to take off. Yeah. So it was, it was a few hundred views on Instagram for a long time. And I, I guess it was just being shared amongst followers and yeah, things yeah. like that. And it suddenly ticked up where I think over a weekend it was 40,000 followers on Instagram. I got a bump by that. So TikTok, you will get most of your views day one or day two, yeah, and then it will slow down. Instagram, yeah. sort of similar, maybe a bit slower, and then it slows down. YouTube is like, you know, it, it's still great. I think day one, sometimes you'll get 100,000 views, yeah. and then it will keep going to the point where it's getting like, after a week or two weeks or a month, it's still increasing by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. You know, and sometimes that then lifts all the other ones as well. And it just feels like a very steady increase, whereas all the others are so like, spit it out, forget it. If I was only big on TikTok, for example, and nowhere else, I'd be a lot more hesitant about jumping in um, yeah, as a business yeah, or yeah. As, as, a, as a way to make money. Um, so yeah, YouTube for me is the is the one. I don't even remember where we started. I feel just I just ranted for so long. <laughs> you know, there were so many barriers in your way, and now it's yeah. you can do it on your phone. Like, and, and it's it's it, the yeah. world we're living in is is you can make anything you want to make. You just have to find a way to do it yourself. Yeah. And opportunities will come if people recognize your your voice, your talent, your whatever. There's something there. They'll see it. Or you might just happily carry on doing your own thing. So reporting from sunny old Bristol, I just want to say a massive thank you to Tom Bates for coming out and speaking to me today. The mastermind behind Nigel and Marmalade. And if you haven't seen it already, go ahead, do yourself a favor and check it out. It's on TikTok. It's on YouTube Shorts. It's on YouTube. It's on Instagram. It's probably on Bebo and Club Penguin by this point. So, you know, do yourself a massive favor. Click the old subscribe button. I'll put the channel somewhere here. Thank you, Harry. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for coming all the way to Bristol to chat to me. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And thank, thank you for making a video on Nigel Marmalade. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for watching. I love you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> thank you. Subscribe. <laughs> By the way, shout out to my uh, beautiful uh, princess girlfriend. She recommended Nigel and Marmalade to me back in, I think, October or November. No, it's your interview. <laughs> no, I'm just...